How's it everyone? This video expedition will examine the geopolitical landscape across the world in For All Mankind. This series unfolds in an alternate reality where the Soviet Union won the moon race by landing a cosmonaut on the lunar surface a month before NASA's Apollo 11 mission with Neil Armstrong in July of 1969. This event spawned an accelerated space race over the following decades, establishing lunar bases and colonies by both the United States and USSR. Additionally, three large space stations were constructed in Earth orbit as logistical transit hubs and staging posts connecting this rapidly expanding space industrial trade network. A multi-billion dollar lunar industry emerged through helium-3 nuclear-fueled fusion technology advancements, powering deuterium-based reactor networks spread across America, Europe, and Russia, including additional space-based economic nations. Bombarded by solar winds for billions of years enriched the lunar surface with fusion-based isotopes that are extremely rare on Earth as this form of radiation is deflected off the atmosphere and the electromagnetic field. In the 1980s, the United Nations divided the moon's territories ratified by an international treaty between NATO and Soviet bloc nations. This developed large helium-3 harvesting programs by various spacefaring nations extracting deuterium from the lunar surface and transporting the isotope materials returned to Earth's orbit by cargo modules. Collection points and processing refineries spread across the continents harness these lunar elements into ultra-efficient and clean renewable energy produced through nuclear fusion reactor facilities and grid networks. By the dawn of the new millennium, the U.S., Canada, Australia, Japan, European Union, China, India, and USSR bloc nations were all connected by these lunar prospected fusion power sources. This significantly decreased the demand for fossil fuels and OPEC production output in this new alternative fusion sustained economic competition through unlimited renewable energy. Both Cold War superpowers decreased their spheres of influence in the Middle East with the Soviets avoiding the 1980s invasion of Afghanistan and the U.S. declining military support in the 1991 Gulf War. However, it will still take decades to completely transition from fossil fuels to a worldwide sustained fusion-based economy with 70% of global trade still dependent upon oil. In the 1990s, pushback from U.S. industrial lobbyists passed governmental restrictions on the export of classified fusion technology to second and third world countries in Central and South America that are still reliant upon American petroleum exports. This opened the door for communist-supported political parties winning elections in Mexico and other Central and South American countries in exchange for fusion reactor technology and Soviet-backed cosmonaut programs forming the coalition of communist countries joined by Egypt and Turkey expanding the Eastern European space agencies on an international scale. This global-based Soviet space economy enabled perestroika of the late 80s and 90s to sustain a successfully reformed socialist free market, maintaining the USSR government into the 21st century. Roscosmos, now the combined communist space programs, rivals that of NASA and Western-supported nations, spawning a militarized space arms race now shifting the Cold War's focus to controlling the moon's resources. The U.S. lunar colony of Jamestown and Russian Star City base led to a Soviet blockade of the moon that narrowly avoided a space-based nuclear exchange of turning the Cold War hot. With the world economy of the 1990s structured for interplanetary expansion, the competition now focused on the colonization and resource acquisition of Mars, searching for water to sustain a long-term presence on the Red Planet. NASA and the European Space Agencies make up the two primary space programs of NATO and the Western powers, including Canada, Japan, Australia, Israel, and Iran. 
China and India comprise the largest independent space programs, now rivaled by private institutions emerging from the free market and corporate sectors. North Korea was secretly funded by the Soviet Union, who additionally supports the international endeavors for the coalition of communist countries and the entire Roscosmos space program. This encompasses the geopolitical landscapes of the Earth and Luna in 2 for All Mankind Season 4 Race to Mars, achieving the next level of a civilization by becoming a dual planetary species. If you enjoy this type of content and want to help support the channel, all you have to do is hit all those buttons. Also, feel free to leave a comment as I do read every last one of them. Also, check out the community tab for exclusive channel designed art. Stop. Thanks so much for watching.